Hey guys, welcome to House Party at Home. My name is Chris, I'm the youth pastor here at Langley Vineyard, if we haven't met before. I hope you're well, I hope you're staying safe and you're keeping yourself occupied over lockdown. I think it's week seven of lockdown. Um, at this point, I'm struggling to even remember what day it is, never mind what week it is, but I hope you're keeping well and I'm excited to be sharing with you guys this week. And so a lot of people have been asking me, Chris, how are you coping with not being able to get a haircut during lockdown? How are you coping with not going to get a fresh skin for you? And uh, the truth is that I'm, uh, I'm not coping well. It's a real, real struggle. And, uh, and if you're the praying type, which I assume all you guys in house party are, I appreciate it if you pray for me. I'm obviously just kidding. But for all you guys struggling uh, with quarantine uh, haircuts right now, uh, I am with you. I feel your pain. We are in this together. Soon there is a day coming, a promised land coming of skin feeds and hair products. It's not that far away, um, but I am with you. And as you can see, um, I'm clearly also struggling. I mean, like alternatively, maybe you're not struggling. Maybe you're living your best life with your hair and uh, you're the type of person who doesn't need a skin feed. And so if you are, well, good for you. I'm kidding, of course, but uh, as I said already before, hope you're all doing well. I'm gonna click my fingers right now and a hat will appear in my head to mask the craziness that is my hair. So here we go. Hopefully Sophie was able to edit that uh, smoothly enough. And, uh, and now we're ready to jump into this week's content of House Party at Home. So as you'll be aware, for the last number of weeks, we've been journeying through a book by Judah Smith called Jesus Is. We are currently in chapter 13, sub-chapter 13 of Jesus Is, and the heading is Jesus Is Alive. And so Judah opens up the chapter with a quote from the movie Braveheart. And uh, I need to make uh, a confession right now. I have not seen the movie Braveheart. And uh, to be honest, I don't have the greatest desire to watch either, but I know that if I was to say that in certain circles, they would not be happy with the fact that I have not seen it. But I'm not even sure if you guys are old enough to watch the movie Braveheart, but nonetheless, the quote from the movie still applies. It's still applicable to what we're discussing. And the quote is, is that every man dies, but not every man truly lives. Every man dies, but not every man truly lives. Why don't you think about that for a second? Now that I've given you all a second to think about that quote, I find that quote really, really interesting. And it actually reminds me of a time in my life when I was 17 years of age. I just made the decision to follow Jesus. And at that point in my life, if I'm being totally honest, the only thing I really cared about was playing Xbox and goofing about. That's all I really cared about. And someone in my church at the time, someone who was older than me, uh, seeing that I had potential. And he said these words to me. He said, Chris, you're not in risk of losing your life, but what you are in risk of is wasting your life. You're not in risk of losing your life, but you are in risk of wasting your life. And what he was really saying there was, Chris, you have potential inside of you, God-given potential. We believe that all of us have God-given potential as sons and daughters of God. And I was choosing to not live in to that potential. I was choosing to occupy my time and my life with other things that if I'm being really honest, weren't really giving me life, weren't really allowing me to experience the life that Jesus had made available to me. And I came to the point at 17 years of age where I had to ask the question, Chris, what percentage of your God-given potential do you want to live into? And depending on that percentage, what do you have to do to ensure that you live inside it? And so in light of all of that, what we want to discuss, and as the chapter also discusses, is what does it mean to be fully alive? You hear the phrase we say around the vineyard from time to time, around engaging with the life of Jesus. What does it mean to encounter the life of Jesus and not to change our day-to-day -day existence. What I find really interesting is um, a lot of us use the phrase living the dream or lay or living the dream. 
We may even look at people on social media, look at celebrities and see all the things that they have, that they may have cars and houses, they may have popularity and status, they may have uh, constant photos of beaches or really cool setups in the room or whatever it is. And we can look at that and say, wow, aren't they living the dream? Because if it's what we think we're gonna find life in, it's what we're ultimately gonna reach for and strive for. And the truth is, is that those things aren't necessarily bad. Having nice things, money, houses, cars, all that kind of stuff aren't necessarily bad. In fact, they're really neutral things. But if it's where we depend to find our source of life from, if, it was, if it's what we define as living the dream or living our best lives, then the question has to be asked, it doesn't really bring life. Is that a reliable source for us to find life in? And surprise, surprise, the Bible, God's word has something to say about this. It has something to say about where we are to find our source of life. And it's found in Ephesians 2. And I really want to encourage you guys, I'm just going to read a really short snip of it because it's just a little video to give you guys some insight. But spend some time reading Ephesians 2. Invite the Holy Spirit to come and speak to you as you read it. But I'm just going to read a snip of it. Here's how Ephesians 2 starts. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in, tra in our transgressions. It is by grace that we have been saved. When we followed the ways of the world, in the example that said, we were dead. It didn't bring us life, but now that we have found ourselves in Christ, it is said that we are made alive in him. And Judah, in the book, discusses this idea of sin and how whenever we live into it, ultimately what it does is it makes us not alive. It diminishes our experience of what it means to be fully human and fully alive. It breaks the connection to the source of life that is Jesus. And Judah unpacks it much more in detail what sin actually is and allow you guys to read through that and discover it. Judah in simple defines sin as missing the mark. And he puts it this way, he says, I have good news and bad news. And the bad news is that, well, you've sinned. I've sinned, we've, we've all sinned. But the good news is that we all have. We are all technically sinners as per se. We've all made mistakes. We've all done things that we are not supposed to. We've all realized that we're not perfect and that we do make mistakes from time to time. And so if you've made a mistake, you're not alone, you're not exempt, you're not one person who's set aside, we are all the same, we have all made mistakes, we have all missed the mark. And realizing that at times we do bad things, it can be a pretty exhausting thing. I can remember whenever I was growing up that if I ever did something I wasn't supposed to do, I would try to go out of my way to try to do something nice for someone so that I could somehow level the playing field. And the truth is that that's just not how it's supposed to be. That's an exhausting way to live. But the good news is, is that Jesus came to this earth and he lived a perfect life, a life without sin, a life to the full. And we are told that Jesus is rich in mercy, that mercy is quick to come at us whenever we do things that we're not supposed to do. But when we decide to invite him in, when we invite him to live alongside us, to walk with us, to work with us, and for us to watch how he does it, we realize that he rescues us from that weight and that expectation that we're to live under. And instead, we can live with him and for him and empowered by him, that we get to live freely and fully alive lives in Jesus that Jesus shows us there is another way to live. There is another way for us to live into the full potential that God has given us. There's a way for us not to waste our lives, but instead we turn to him and he allows us to be embraced by him, that his mercy invades our life 
and grace invades our life. And as we've learned, grace isn't just something that takes away the past, but grace is something that releases us into the future that God has made available to us. A future that is bright, that is full of life, and that is God given. And so in summary, we're told to not waste our lives going to things that are not gonna bring us life. Putting our hope in those things as sources that bring us life ultimately will leave us disappointed. Ultimately will leave us not truly living. But whenever we decide to invite Jesus in, he takes us on an adventure in which we begin to live lives to the full. We get to engage with what Jesus has made available to us. We get to join with him as he demonstrates the kingdom of heaven here on earth. That we get to experience the greatness of God and the beauty of God alongside us and with us as we live. And so here is what we would love for you guys to do in the engage section of House Party at Home. As you'll be aware, you guys will be reading through the book. I want to encourage you, don't read through it in a hurry. Sit and think about some of the ideas that Judah unpacks. And he explains it much better than I have in this video. This is just something to help give you some insight into some of the things that I took away. But on top of that, open up your Bibles, turn to Ephesians 2, grab a notebook and grab a pen, and work through Ephesians 2. Note the things that stand out. If you have questions, Google those questions, look into it, study it more, and learn about how Jesus rescued us from a life that brought us death into one that makes us fully alive. And to sit with those scriptures, invite the Holy Spirit and let him speak to you as you study it. The next thing that we would love for you guys to think about and probably reflect on is, where do you find your source of life? What are you placing your hope in to bring you life? Maybe that's a future career, maybe that's aspirations, Maybe that's dreams that you have, and those things aren't necessarily bad. But if it's all that we place our hope in for a source of life, what we've learned is that we can become disappointed in that. And instead, what I'd love for you guys to do is to think about what it would look like for you to invite Jesus into those dreams, into those ambitions, and to begin to think of what that could look like, how endless the potential is around that, and how God could partner with you in those things. And the last thing that we would love to point you towards is that we believe that God's word is life to us. That it is described as a light onto our path, a lamp onto our feet. It is a guide for us. It is something that nourishes us. It is something that uh, we can feast on and we can be satisfied in. And so what I would love for you guys to do is this week, I'm sure a lot of you do it already, is to really engage in the daily devotions that we're posting on our Instagram page. Really dive in to the passages of scripture, really engage with the practices that we are encouraging you guys to do, and really spend some time in prayer speaking to Jesus. And ultimately, this is what we're talking about. Here is where we find the source of life, where we find a source of strength and encouragement and hope in such interesting times that we find ourselves in. That is all for this week's House Party at Home. We'll be back next week with another House Party at Home. I miss all you guys a lot. I miss playing The Floor is Lava with you guys in our venue and all of that good stuff. But I pray this week you find fun in whatever you do. You find life in whatever you're doing. And I pray that Jesus would speak to you this week around the source of life. Have fun engaging with our House Party at Home content and I will catch you soon. See ya.